All right, so now we're going to talk about word choice. Well, what is a word choice issue? This is what happens when you use a word in a particular context where the word's meaning or tone is just nonsensical or inappropriate. It just doesn't make any sense. How can you tell if you have a word choice issue? Well, the first thing you can do is read your writing very carefully and critically. Make sure that you know the meaning of every single word that you use. And you also want to make sure that your words are appropriate. If they need to be formal, make sure they're formal or informal. If they need to be technical, non-technical, just make sure that they are suited to your writing situation. Another thing you should do is ask someone else to read your writing, but make sure they do it carefully and critically. Before you do that, though, you need to explain the writing situation to the reader. You want to answer questions like, well, what is this text for? Or if it's a school paper, what are the instructions? If you let the reader know what the purpose of the writing is, then it gives them a better idea of what kind of terminology is appropriate or what tone is going to be effective for that particular paper. So what are some common word choice issues? Well, the first one, the biggest one, is relying way too much on the thesaurus. Now, this is not to say that the thesaurus is a bad idea. It's not. It's wonderful, if used appropriately. When I say relying too much on the thesaurus, I mean when you're typing in Microsoft Word and you realize you've used a word twice, and then you just click thesaurus and randomly pick the top word that comes up. First of all, that word may mean something completely different. Like, you may not seem say exactly what you mean. Also, you risk reusing the word in a grammatically incorrect way. So let's take a look at this. Imagine that I want to fancy up the previous sentence, that you also risk using the word in a grammatically incorrect way. Well, a thesaurus on my desk gives me speculate as a synonym for risk. OK, but then my sentence ends up being, you also speculate using a word in a grammatically incorrect way. That sentence makes absolutely no sense. Speculate only means risk in certain situations, like real estate gambling. And second, you can speculate that, or speculate why, or speculate upon, or even speculate with, but you can't really speculate using unless you're talking about speculate using some sort of software or program kind of thing. And I don't think that's what you mean in this sentence. So you had a thesaurus gamble, and you basically created a sentence whose meaning and grammar are both confused. So that's why you want to be wary of the thesaurus. Now, another important uh, word choice problem is overlooking the importance of connotation. Now, words have two levels of meaning. The denotation is the meaning that the dictionary gives you. That's literally what the word means. Connotation is what people associate with the, the word itself. So that's the emotional resonance or the tone of the word. It's like you take a word like war. Well, the denotation is fairly straightforward. Whereas the connotation is going to have an emotional resonance. That word is going to mean different things to different people. So you want to be careful of that because sometimes that can cause a problem and the problem would be a word choice issue. You pick the wrong word for the occasion. What am I talking about here? Well, let's say that you want to identify someone as a person charged with upholding the law, who carries a badge and a gun, and who has the right to arrest suspected criminals. In a formal paper about the justice system, you would call this person a police officer, right? That's what we call them. But if you're just writing maybe an email describing how you got pulled over for speeding, you might call the person a cop, right? It's not quite as formal as, as a police officer. And maybe if you're writing some sort of angry personal blog post about campus police pepper spraying somebody, you might might call this person a pig. Now, all of these words can mean the same thing. They refer to a person who is upholding the law, who carries a badge and a gun, and has the right to arrest people. But if you use the wrong one in the wrong situation, you're going to lose a lot of credibility, and you're definitely going to have a word choice issue. Like, if you use cop when you should be more formal, or if you use pig when you should be unbiased, that's going to be a big issue for you. Now, Another uh, final, really, word choice issue is when you use homonyms, or an almost homonym. A homonym is a word that sounds alike when spoken, but is spelled differently, or means a different thing, like the there, there, and there um, issue I'm sure you're aware of, or your and your, or even like our, our, and our, are, right? Those things, we say them the same way, so um, we would just say are, and some, uh, you know, the pronunciation isn't going to distinguish which one. So you want to be careful about homonyms. Now, this may seem silly, but if you've only ever heard a word and you've never actually seen it, you might end up with an error like this. Like somebody might be lactose intolerant for lactose intolerant. Or let me tell you, I read an entire paper one time about soap poppers, and it took me a while to figure out that the person actually meant soap operas. So you want to be careful about those homonyms when it comes to word choice issues. 
Now, how can you revise this uh, word choice issue? First of all, choose a different word. Pick a word that makes sense. Pick a word that you're familiar with, but that's appropriate for your particular context. Also, look up those words. Just don't rely on the thesaurus to spit out a word. Look it up and make sure that that's what it means. Or you can increase your vocabulary, learn some new words, try those out. Or if you're doing a research paper, use words from sources, like use the vocabulary that's appropriate for your particular um, area, whatever it is you're writing about. So those are some things you can do. Now, are they always wrong? Only when they confuse your reader. A word choice error can make your reader lose trust in your ability to write knowledgeably about your subject. In other words, this goes down to uh, credibility here, or ethos. Um, for example, if, if you don't know that someone who leaves a, like a vicious attack in a blog comment is called a troll, then somebody might call you a noob. Well, if you don't know what a troll is or you don't know what a noob is and you use them in the wrong context, then you're going to lose a lot of credibility uh, with uh, your readers. So they're not wrong, but they make your writing way less effective than it could be. So. There are some writing situations when you can get like a great effect by using an unexpected word that some people would be like, oh, that's wrong. For example, let's look at this ad for the Beetle. This this is the Volkswagen Beetle ad from 1960, and it shows a black and white picture of the car with a caption, Lemon. Take a look at this. So there it is, Lemon. That's not something you generally associate with a car because it seems like a word choice problem. A lemon is a faulty car, a car that's going to break down right after you buy it. Well, that's probably not what Volkswagen meant. But as it turned out, lemon was exactly the word that they intended. Their point, and it's in the small text below the caption, if uh, you want to slow the video down and read it, you can, but it's a popular ad. But the idea is that Volkswagens are so rigorously inspected that even something as minor as a, like a tiny windshield scratch makes the car a lemon they won't sell. So even though the car looks fine, they would be like, no, this one's not good enough, it's a lemon. So sometimes Sometimes those word choice issues can make your point, but sometimes they can break your point, so you want to be careful. Overall, just remember, English has a huge vocabulary. Make sure you're using the right word for the occasion.